Hello and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to talk about a degenerative eye disease I have called keratoconus. So what is keratoconus? Well, it's a degenerative eye disease. So the cornea gets uh, progressively thinner and as it gets thinner, it distorts and the light passing through the cornea also gets distorted and uh, that leads to blurry vision. And in my case, that means uh, things far away can be blurry and also things close up can be blurry. Um, it's quite rare, it affects between 1 in 2,000 and 1 in 500 people. It can be hereditary, although in my case I'm not aware of anyone else in my family having it. Um, it can affect Asian people more, apparently. Um, I do have a bit of Asian heritage in myself, so perhaps that's where I get it from. So what's the prognosis if you've been diagnosed with keratoconus? Well, I'd just like to reassure you that you're not going to go blind. I know myself, when I first heard that I had keratoconus, I, my immediate thoughts and worries were that I was going to go blind, and very few people do. There's lots of treatment options available. So I had an operation called corneal cross-linking. I had that performed in both eyes, and that's a great operation. It's, it's slightly invasive, but it's not too bad. And what, what cross-linking will do is it will halt the progression of the disease. So if you have been diagnosed with keratoconus, then obviously speak to your doctor, but uh, cross-linking is a great way of stopping the disease in its tracks and maintaining the vision that you still have. So I wear glasses, glasses help. Um, they only help so far because keratoconus misshapens the cornea. Then uh, a popular option is to use contact lenses. Uh, and there are various different types of contact lenses. I can't really speak with any authority about them. I've never tried contact lenses, but contact lenses, you can imagine, help to hold the cornea in the correct shape, and then they'll obviously correct the vision that way. There's also an option called intacts, which is where you have little plastic uh, inserts into the eyes, and those can help hold the cornea as well. And then finally, if um, nothing else works, then there's always a, the option of a corneal transplant. So what's it like to have keratoconus? Well, um, one thing is that lights can look quite streaky. So if you're driving at night, then car headlights and car uh, rear lights can look a bit streaky with sort of lines uh, going out from where the uh, light is extending up and down. Uh, I think astigmatism can also cause these kind of um, visual defects. Um, the moon might have shadows or a bit of a trail, or uh, street lamps may also be a bit double and have a bit of a trail. It could be a bit hard to tell whether you have keratoconus. It, it can cause blurry vision, so it might be difficult to tell whether you have keratoconus or short sight or long sight. So that's why it's important to see your optician every couple of years. So how did I get diagnosed with keratoconus? Well, about four years ago when I was 34, I started to get a lot of headaches. I was using a computer at work and I was getting a lot of headaches. Talking to some friends, they suggested I see the optician. And when I checked my last prescription, I realized it had been seven whole years since I'd seen the optician, which is far too long. Don't ever go seven years without seeing an optician. I booked into an optician. We've got a free scheme with work, um, which means you get free eye tests. So I, I booked in with our scheme, I saw a local optician and he had to look at my eyes. He prescribed me an up-to-date prescription, some new glasses, but he also referred me to Southampton General, to their eye hospital. So that was in April 2016. So he obviously saw something that wasn't quite right in my eyes and sort of thank God he did. I, did, I wasn't really sure what uh, the reason was for why he was um, referring me to the a general hospital and why I had to go and have a further eye appointment. In my mind, I'd been given glasses and they were going to help the headaches and everything was fine. So in July that year, 2016, two months later, I had my appointment with um, Southampton Eye Hospital. And um, I remember that day quite well because I was running a little bit late and the car park was absolutely chock-a-block. Yeah, and it was really difficult to find a space. And I was looking at my watch thinking, if I'm not able to park soon, I'm going to miss my appointment. And I had the thought running through my head, well, if I do most miss my appointment, maybe I'll just drive home and um, I guess I can remake the appointment. I, I really had the mentality that I was quite young, nothing was wrong. I didn't understand why I had to go and see the eye doctor at the hospital. And 
Um, luckily, I, a parking space became available. I managed to get parked and I managed to get to my appointment on time. Now, um, I really love our NHS. I think it's a great service, but they were quite busy that day and I had to had various different um, examinations by different nurses and I was moved around quite a lot. And by the time I saw the consultant and I had completed a number of tests, he was obviously very busy that day and he didn't have very long to spend with me. So he um, looked at the results of the test they'd done that day and he, he confirmed to me that I had keratoconus. And that was a very big shock at the time. I wasn't really expecting to be diagnosed with any problems. He was a little bit blunt, but I don't blame him. He was a bit rushed off his feet and he kind of put it to me that I've got this um, eye disease and they do this operation called cross-linking and would I like the operation to stop the progression of the disease? I was taken a little bit aback by this, but of course I said, yes, I'd like the operation. Now, I remember um, I left and I'd gone to the appointment on my own, which probably wasn't the best idea because they'd used eye drops to dilate my pupils and at that point, I was feeling a bit well, a bit down in the dumps, I guess, because I'd just been diagnosed with a, a strange eye disease that I'd never heard of. And I remember I had to go to the coffee shop. I wanted to leave the hospital and drive home, but because my pupils were dilated, um, trying to walk out into the bright sunshine was just... Um, it was just too hard. The, the sunshine would... Um, it was just too bright, and I, my, my eyes were so wide that they were letting all the light and you just I had to wait for a couple of hours in the coffee shop by myself until that I could leave the hospital and drive home so if you do have to go for an eye appointment I don't think dilation drops are very common actually I've only had that done the once um, none of the subsequent keratoconus treatments I've had have needed to have the dilation drops but it is worth going with someone just in case they do need to dilate your pupils it's just like a little drop they put in your pupils that makes them open wider um, doesn't hurt at all, but it will mean that um, driving or exposure to bright lights is going to be difficult afterwards. I even remember sitting in that coffee shop trying to, you know, I wanted to Google keratoconus and read more about it, but I couldn't, um, even with my phone's brightness turned right down, it was far too bright to me, for me to look at. So I remember just having a cup of coffee and a, a cookie and feeling a bit sorry for myself, thinking, oh, you know, is this the end? Am I going to go blind? So that was in uh, July in 2016. So the next day I called Bupa. So I've got a private healthcare scheme here in the UK with my employer. And I'm fortunate enough that I could use this for the treatment. So I gave them a call the next day and told them about the diagnosis I'd been given. And they confirmed to me, yeah, they could do the operation I needed privately, which was great. I then arranged to go and see a Bupa consultant at my local uh, private hospital and it was July by the time I met uh, Mr. Hussein, who has kind of treated me since. Uh, Mr. Hussein was great. He spent a lot of time talking me through what keratoconus is, what the options were, and he put my mind at ease. I was quite fortunate that he was able to spend quite a bit of time with me. He put my mind at ease. He did confirm that I had the disease and that I would uh, benefit from cross-linking. So after his consultation, we arranged to get my left eye done. So my left eye is my um, worse eye. So I had my left eye operated on in August 2017. So I went in for cross-linking. It is typically a day operation. I had mine done very late in the day, which means that um, by the time I was finished, I think I went down for surgery at 8.30. So by the time I was finished, it's pretty much the end of the day. So they kept me in overnight, but typically cross-linking can be done during the day and it will just be a, a daytime appointment. I was fortunate that I was had it done under general anaesthesia. That's quite, um, it's quite rare, to be honest. A lot of the time it will be done under sort of uh, local anaesthesia or sedation. Um, I really wanted to have it done under general anaesthesia and I was lucky going private I could have it done. Not because it particularly hurts, just because I'm a bit of a scaredy cat and a bit of a wimp. And I thought, well, if I'm going to have something done, uh, some kind of operation on my eyes, I'd quite like to be asleep for that, please. So I was fortunate that I was able to have it done under um, general anaesthesia. So the operation itself is, um, well, obviously I was asleep, so... I will uh, link down below to some resources so you can find out a bit more about the operation. But essentially they open up the eye, they apply vitamin B2 drops and they use UV light. And the UV light kind of breaks down the collagen. I liken it a bit like having sunburn on your eyeball. 
they do remove a small amount of um, material on the cornea then they uh, use UV light to break it down and then vitamin B2 st drops to strengthen it. It is very different to uh, laser eye surgery. A lot of people have laser eye surgery and they come out with better vision. Cross-linking, you have the surgery and it kind of, it's almost like it's damaging the eye lens is how I've always explained it to people. It's damaging the eye lens, but it will grow back stronger. So you come out of the surgery with blurry vision. You come out with a uh, mask or a, you know, a little eye guard to stop yourself sort of touching the eye or you know getting infected and they give you a, a regime of drops so you have sort of antibiotic drops and uh, steroid drops I remember having to take those about every two hours it was quite painful for the first few hours after the operation um, it's a bit like having a paper cut in your eye it's really not too pleasant and um, feels I guess a bit sore where they've used the UV light on it but it really doesn't take long to heal and I would say within 12 hours the pain had pretty much gone and what you're left with after the pain has gone is the um, the, the blurriness of vision. So um, for the first eye, it was I had my worst eye done, so I still had my stronger right eye to rely on. It takes a little while for the vision to come back, and actually the good thing about the operation is the eye does tend to grow back stronger, or the vision will come back stronger. So I was very fortunate actually, and after I had both eyes completed, um, I could actually re read print six lines uh, lower on the kind of optician's chart. So it doesn't happen for everyone. Uh, Cross-linking is about retaining the vision you have. It won't necessarily improve your vision, but in some cases it will also improve your vision. So I had my left eye done. I had a couple of weeks off work to recover from that. It was a bit easier because I still had my right uh, stronger eye to rely on. You go in for a post-op examination of how the operation's gone and they sort of take a bandaged contact lens off. But from my notes, it was October then when I went in and had my kind of other eye done, my right eye. So I had the left eye done first and then I had the right eye, which is what I call my good eye. So back into the private hospital in October in 2016, I had my right eye done. Um, this time recovery was slightly harder because you come out of the operation with blurry vision. So I had a left eye that's naturally blurry anyway for me. And then I had my good eye with its kind of vision reduced because of the operation. Again, I had some more time off work. It took a bit longer to kind of get back to where I was vision wise. I think I didn't drive for a little bit. I remember going to a Chinese restaurant and finding it hard to kind of like pick out people's faces a little bit. It was just, I was in my own little blurry world for a little bit. No, you is blind. I'm not blind, you blind. That is what I just said. You just said what? I did not say what. All in all, it's not a bad operation. And that was four years ago. And now I just have two yearly checkups. Um, I go to the opticians every two years. I go back and see my consultant every two years. He does a topography, which is a scan of the cornea. And it measures a bit like on a map, you know, where you have the topography and how hilly it is. They've got a very clever kind of laser scanner, which does that for a cornea. So he does that every now and again and we check that the disease hasn't progressed. If it has progressed, there's always the option of having corneal cross-linking again and there's always the other options like um, uh, contact lenses. So for me, um, I'm really glad I had the operation. It stabilised my vision. It, it actually, as I said, it improved my vision as well. So um, I think about a year after the operation when my vision stabilised, I went back to the opticians and I found I could read six lines smaller print than I could previously. So that was a real benefit for me. And I've been quite happy since the operation. I feel reassured I've had it. It's still quite a new operation, so I don't think they they quite know the long-term aspects of it. But um, fingers crossed it's kind of stabilised my vision. So what's my advice to someone that's been newly diagnosed with keratoconus? Well, number one, please don't worry, you're not going blind. Number two, take someone with you to your appointments. It'll help from a reassurance point of view, but it also could help from a practical point of view. If you're given eye drops, you may need someone to drive you home. Number three would be join a Facebook group. There are many keratoconus support groups out there. I'll link a Facebook group that I use down below. It will really help just hearing from some other people that have the disease. Although it's rare, there's many support groups for it. And number four, your consultant will probably already say this to you, but please try and avoid rubbing your eyes. Rubbing your eyes can make the disease worse, so please try and avoid it.
Okay, so tomorrow's an exciting day for me. I'm going to pick up some new glasses and they're very focals. I've not had very focals before. So I'm going to do a review of what it's like to have very focals. So that'll be the next video on this channel. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to hear more from me, please subscribe to the channel.